Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the 1992-93 Pinnacle Hockey set. So, for 92-93, hockey, Pinnacle had already done a really good job of launching itself onto the scene with the 91-92 set. They did it in football, and then they did it again in hockey. And then they got around to baseball for launching their 1992 set. And the 92 set was a very grown-up card set, but they really did a good job of anchoring down the way that Pinnacle would work. So where the 91 and 91, 92 sets, the football and the hockey sets, those two had some growth that you could see going between them. When you got to 1992 proper, they figured it out in baseball, pretty much templated, templated it for football, although they, they added a bunch of things in football that were more distinct from football. And then by the time they got to hockey, they were pretty much in the groove. They pretty well knew what they were doing. So there's a lot of similarities. But regardless, the card set for hockey does have its own quirks because of the fact that it had a whole Canadian release. That's the main thing that's distinct about the hockey release. But there are a few other minor elements. So to kick it off, the design for 1992-93 Pinnacle is an upgrade over 91, mainly because they simplified it and really locked in the strength of the card. This is a black bordered card with a partial black inner border and then a full action shot inside the card. And the action shot is a big improvement over the previous year because in the previous year they had a portrait in the front of the card along with a very small action shot. Well here they went with a larger action shot and because they have the inner border they allow, that allows the player to spill over onto that making the player more distinct which is really helpful for the hockey cards because the backgrounds are so overpowering that it gives you a better cue into where the player is in that whole picture. The card also is a lot stronger in terms of the color band on the front, which is team color. And this helps for, for collectors of teams and for players to really see the distinction of each individual team on the card. That was a big improvement over the 91 set where it was somewhat distinct, but it wasn't as powerful. Here with the black borders, everything is a lot stronger. So big improvement there. And on the card back, once again, they have a blue band on the back for the US release. But interestingly, when you shift over to the Canadian release, yes, they do have the red band on the back. So the US versus the Canadian, that tradition they started in 1991, they were doing it again in 1992, blue for the US, red for the Canadian. But on the front, you might have noticed something interesting where the, the image changed. And that is a big key to this, to the difference between these two sets is the fact that for the Canadian release, they selected completely different images for all of the veteran players. So that means that for the bulk of this set, the Canadian release actually has different images than the US release. And this means that anybody who is a team collector or a player collector might actually want to get both cards because in 1991 you could go, well, I've already got the card. Do I really need the French language version? Well, here in 1992, you probably do because it's basically a completely different card. Fun little element that they added in for the difference between the two releases. And um, yeah, for those who had the ability to collect both sets, it made it a lot more worthwhile. And then the rookies are, these are interesting where the card design is the same on the front and on the back as well in this case, except they have a rookie logo, but the card image does not change between the US version and the Canadian version. So where I said all the veterans had different, not, different images, for the rookies, they didn't. The rookies are the exact same, which is basically the same way as all of the inserts or all the subsets as we'll be getting into it. So the only place where we actually see a distinct difference between the two releases is the veteran images. And so for the subsets, the first subset is sidelines. Now, Sidelines was the last subset they did in the previous year, and this is where they look at players' extracurricular activities. Maybe it's a business that they own. Maybe it's a job that they have. Maybe it's an educational path that they've been going down, or maybe it's just a hobby. 
in the previous year, they, they kind of alluded to it. Well, in 1992, they changed the card radically to, so there's a black border around the outside around a very large image of the player either posed around whatever that, that extracurricular thing is or an action shot showing it all in action. Either way, these cards do a better job of really showing all of this stuff, even though the cards aren't as eye-catching as the previous cards in 1991 had been. Then they also did idols again, but this is in reverse. So in this case, they actually got rid of the border, which really makes you wonder why they had the border there in the first place in 1991. But this, just like in the previous year, here is a, a sepia shot of a legendary player who had a, an impact on a younger player. So you have the younger player in front, and then you have the person who was the influence behind, the idol, if you will. And these, the, the various idols that are selected are really cool because they're not usually the names that you're familiar with. So this gives you a really cool look into some of the players who had an impact you may not have even realized were seen in such a light that they would have that kind of an impact. So it gives a really good three-dimensional look at the history of hockey to a lesser extent. Really pretty cool. And then they also redid the game winners set so that in 1992, game winners, which is looking at the stalwart players who really hold the rest of their team up. In this case, they don't have the, the busy text design approach they had the previous year where everything ran together. Here, they still have the text, but they did the text in a way where it's like a pattern behind the player. Gorgeous looking card, really pretty interesting how they laid it out. But I should stop for a second and note that they, you're, you may be looking at this card and going, boy, there's a lot of red on that card. I guess it's the Canadian version. It's not, it's the US version. The Canadian version and the US version of the subset cards are identical. In almost every single case, there's no difference between the two releases, except for the text. And the thing about 1992 for the Canadian release is that in 1991, with the inaugural release, the US version was all English language. The Canadian version was all French language. Well, in 1992-93, the, the Canadian release is actually bilingual. So they took the text on the back, they truncated it, and then they repeated it in French. So that means that the, for the subset cards, the only way that you can tell the difference between them is by looking at the text and seeing, does it look like it's repeated or does it look like one block of text? That's the only way you're, well, it's not the only way, but it's just about the only way you're gonna see the difference. But I say this now because now we move on to masks. And this is one of the great traditions of Pinnacle. Pinnacle would, Pinnacle started doing Team Pinnacle in 1991 and they did that all the way through to the end across all the sports, Team Pinnacle was the standard for Pinnacle. Well, over in hockey, they also had another one starting in 1992, which was Masks. And in 92, 93, Masks was a subset in the main set. It would become insert sets, but Masks is such a popular feature of Pinnacle that even here with this subset card, these subset cards are more pursued than the regular player cards for these players. And that's the way that sub, a lot of subset cards used to be back in 1990, 91, 92. We didn't have much in terms of insert sets. And so it was the subsets that really captured our eye. And there are a few subsets or individual cards from subsets that continue to hold with that kind of allure. Masks here in 1992, 93 is one of those. They're just as common as the rest of the cards, but these cards are more heavily pursued they're more sought after than the regular cards of the players because people are looking more for the masks than for the player association. So this card, like I said, this is good to follow up what I talked about in the previous one for one simple reason. You may look at the back of this card and go, hmm, there's no text. Exactly. So how do you tell the difference between the US release and the Canadian release? Well, they thought about this one, the front the word masks is either in blue or it's in red. So that's the way you tell for this one subset. Pretty cool. 
They thought about it and they figured it out. And then they have their good guys set. And good guys is a hockey specific subset carryover from 1991. This is a set that looks at players who have an impact in their community. They do something in sort of an outreach or a fundraising kind of a space for whether it's the community they play in or they grew up in or whatever it is. This is a really cool subset that looks at players in a, in a whole different way. And I, I really appreciate the way they did it. Although I have to note, it's almost impossible to see the pinnacle written on the front of this card. It is there. But the card looks so much like an upper deck set from or subset from I think it's 1993. But do note the upper deck set looks almost the same, but this is the pinnacle. This is part of the pinnacle set. So there you go. That's the 1992 set. Although there are a couple of things to mention, and the first thing to mention is that they did have inserts and plural. So in 1992, they had started doing Team Pinnacle in the way that we knew. In baseball, they kicked it off. Football, they followed it. Hockey, they followed it. This is six cards for hockey. It is the starting roster of the two all-star teams. So the, the Wales Conference and the Campbell Conference. And it is the players matched up against each other. Each card is two-faced. So they have a player on one side, player on the other. And the cards are, they use stipple art, which is just gorgeous. A really cool quality about the 1992 family of Team Pinnacle cards. They have that in a full bleed, which makes it so strong. Gold band down toward the bottom, and the very base is a black band. Every single card is done this way. Now, these cards did come in packs, which means there is a US version and a Canadian version. US version has blue text. The Canadian version has red text. Very simple, very straightforward, but it means it's a six card set, but there are 12 distinct cards if you're trying to get both releases. And then in jumbo packs, they had a set called Team 2000. And this is basically the score young superstars for Pinnacle. Again, jumbo packs only. These cards, they follow the same model as the other sports. It is a half bleed card with two black bands on the opposite sides. Lots and lots and lots of gold foil. Just gold foil all over the place. But they have no red or blue. But they did come in either release. And so you'll notice first off that from the card front, well, they have different images. So just like the veteran cards in the main set, here again they use different images. Cool. But how do you tell the difference between the two? Well, Obviously, you could read the text on the back, but another way is that the Canadian version of the card has a maple leaf, a gold foil maple leaf, above the Team 2000 text. So you, say, you find the Team 2000, you go up, and there's a little maple leaf just above that for the Canadian release. That's how you can tell the difference. But there is one other thing I wanted to mention, and that is that in 1991, they did a promo panel of four cards for, for the release. Well, in 1992, they started doing the six card panel. And this was something that they did in baseball and football. They did it in hockey where it's three cards wide, two cards, um, two cards deep. So it's six cards on each panel. They did one of those for hockey, but that's for the US release. For the Canadian release, they did a panel of four. And they didn't just do one, they did a couple of panels that have four players on each panel. So Kind of like what they had done in football in 1991, here in, in 1992, they did that for their Canadian release. So that is the other way that they did panels. And that's what they did for 1992-93 in Pinnacle. Now, I've already talked about the 91-92 set in a previous video. I'm going to talk about 93-94 in a separate video. I want to, there's a lot to go into that, so I, I want to do that separately. I wanted to just take the opportunity to look at the 92-93 set here, which I've done. So um, yeah, thank you very much for, for watching this video. Now, if you have any questions, you know, let me know in the, in the comments below. And if you have not subscribed yet, I do urge you to do so and check out my other videos. And uh, yeah, Thank you.